Thank you, Dr. Jones. During today's convening, we ask that you share your experience via Twitter and Facebook. The social media handles are all on the screen. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to submit questions at any time during this meeting by using the Zoom Q&A button. Answers will be posted together with the meeting summary and slides on the National Forum's website. Please use the chat function to offer comments and information throughout the convening. And now, I thank the National Forum's contributing members whose support makes today's convening possible. They include Amgen, AstraZeneca, Bristol Myers Squibb Pfizer, Esperian, Johnson and Johnson, and Novartis, and Spark 360 for its in-kind contributions. Over the last 15 months, America and the world have heard the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention provide guidance on protecting people, communities, and the nation from COVID-19. Even as the pandemic has gotten most of the airtime and newsprint, CDC has been hard at work to address non-infectious diseases that were too prevalent before COVID-19 and the inequities associated with them. Dr. Karen Hacker, Director of the National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion at CDC, has been leading these efforts. We are pleased to have Dr. Hacker with us here today. She has extensive experience as a researcher at Harvard and as a public health practitioner as the local health official in Allegheny County, Pittsburgh, PA. Dr. Hacker? Thank you so much, John, and a pleasure to be here today. Today, I'd like to discuss the importance of recognizing how COVID-19 has affected chronic disease, and more specifically, cardiovascular disease and hypertension. We know that certain health conditions and chronic diseases put people at higher risk of developing severe illness from COVID-19. Heart conditions such as heart failure, coronary artery disease, cardiomyopathy, and possibly high blood pressure or hypertension are all conditions that put people at risk for severe complications from COVID-19. Data from June 2020 show that hospitalizations were reported six times higher and death 12 times higher for COVID-19 patients who had underlying conditions. Cardiovascular disease was the most common underlying condition at 32% of reported conditions. Hypertension affects tens of million adults in the United States more than 116 million of us, and the control rate is less than 25%, and disparities in control rate abound. In addition, many people are unaware they have or are at risk for hypertension. COVID-19 has revealed many barriers and challenges for monitoring and controlling chronic diseases, including hypertension. And despite the relationship between cardiovascular disease and COVID-19, the pandemic resulted in a decreased use of healthcare services for emergencies and for ongoing prevention and routine healthcare. Due to the pandemic, many people were unable to access important management tools and treatments for their hypertension, such as blood pressure monitors, medications, and healthy food. People also had less opportunity to be physically active, a trend which can result in higher rates of obesity, overweight, and hypertension. Data have also shown that rates of alcohol consumption have increased during the pandemic, and alcohol consumption is a known risk factor for hypertension. Due to the increased stress from the pandemic, we may also see an increase in smoking rates, another risk factor for heart disease. Many of our state programs and resources dedicated to heart and brain health were challenged by the demands of the pandemic. The lack of access to preventive services and treatments for hypertension means we will potentially see an increase in the number of adults with uncontrolled hypertension and a further increase in cardiovascular events, including deaths. COVID-19 affects the cardiovascular system care and outcomes and has done so inequitably. We know that chronic disease risk factors for chronic disease and COVID-19 all tend to disproportionately affect people of lower socioeconomic status and certain racial and ethnic minority groups. As a result, Black or African-American people, Hispanic or Latino people, American Indian or Alaska Native people, and Asian Pacific Islander people are all at higher risk than non-Hispanic white people of getting sick, being hospitalized, or dying of COVID-19. High blood pressure is more common in non-Hispanic Black adults at 
than in non-Hispanic white adults at only 46%, non-Hispanic Asian adults at 39%, or Hispanic adults at 36%. And across all subsets of US adults with hypertension, the rate of control defined as less than 130 over 80 is extremely low. By race, 13.2 million, or 81.9% of non-Hispanic Blacks, and 58.8 million, or 77.8% of non-Hispanic Whites, 12.9%, or 85.6% of Hispanics, and 5.6 million, or 86.4% of non-Hispanic Asians, and finally 2 million of others of uncontrolled hypertension. Although we cannot yet predict the effect of these trends on control of existing conditions, we do know that four in 10 Americans surveyed in June last year reported delaying or avoiding medical care during the COVID-19 pandemic for both routine and emergency care. Delaying or avoiding urgent or emergency care has been even more common among persons with underlying medical conditions, Black and Hispanic persons and people with disabilities. And the extent to which control of chronic disease might mitigate a person's COVID-19 risk is still largely unknown. But we do know that appropriate management of chronic diseases, including hypertension, can save lives. So as we see progress against the pandemic, a backlog of critical chronic disease care will still need to be addressed. This backlog could result from the neglected emergent care, delayed preventive care, misscreening, mistreatments, lack of medication, changes in healthcare access, but also economic hardship. The underutilization of these preventive services may have an even greater effect on people disadvantaged by pre-existing disparities. And for many, the effects of the pandemic on access to primary care practices and other healthcare settings and a lack of community resources may be of particular concern. So what we know is that throughout the COVID-19 epidemic, a great deal of anxiety has surfaced about safely accessing healthcare services. Healthcare providers have adopted a wide variety of strategies, though, to mitigate risk, including increased social distancing, like limits on waiting room capacity, mask wearing by all people in healthcare facilities, screening of patients for COVID-19 symptoms, and in some cases, for actual infection, and expanding the use of telemedicine. Patients now have a range of options for safely receiving care and should ask and be informed about these options when making their appointments. Telemedicine options can help streamline access to needed care, but these options depend on digital access, which is also likely to be most problematic for older people, those who are of lower income and with fewer resources, and people in rural communities. The pandemic's total impact on hypertension and cardiovascular disease is still largely unknown. We will need to research how chronic disease has been affected by the loss or lack of health insurance, stress from the pandemic, the time spent at home and its effect on mental and emotional and physical health, the lack of access to healthy food, the lack of follow-up care, and the loss of medication regimes. We also do not know the long-term impact that this will have on people who get sick from COVID-19 and have underlying or COVID-related cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular care has always been essential and providing this care has become challenging during the COVID-19 pandemic. We must improve awareness and encourage utilization of needed care. Otherwise, we may find ourselves absolutely overwhelmed by poor health outcomes when the pandemic is over. This work will require innovative approaches from a healthcare system perspective, but also from a public health system that have to balance the risks and benefits during the pandemic. And even more importantly, it will require a concerted effort to address the social determinants of health, which have been compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic and which we believe are driving today's health inequities. Ensuring health equity for people with and at risk for cardiovascular disease is central to our mission at CDC, as central as it is to the National Forum. Thank you so much for joining today's session. It's been a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you.